Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. This is the ISO GOAT here, back again for another quick video. Let me start this by saying I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I have financial experience whatsoever. Do not invest in anything solely based off my opinions or anything that I say in this video until you've done your own due diligence and your own research first. Of course, they are taking the trash out right now, so my apologies for that. Never throw more money than you're willing to lose, and also make sure you have a firm understanding of crypto before throwing in any kind of money. So shout out to y'all. Happy Monday. Um, got a couple tweets, a couple articles I want to talk to y'all about. And then uh, there's a question as well at the end uh, that someone addressed as well. Uh, shout out to XRP. Uh, it looks like there's a chart that shows fundamental payment system projects in 2023. Ooh la la. All right, so uh, with the chart, it, all this is posted on my page, just as I always say, uh, just so that you're aware. So use your own discernment, use your own interpretation. Um, I think this is pretty much verbatim, but you know, um, let me start with this. Key organization, SWIFT. Uh, it's basically a diagram that shows uh, delivery date, region focus, and then payment system changes that are coming uh, to these different systems, okay? Um, so for SWIFT, March 2023, migrating to ISO 20022 standard, cross-border payments and reporting, which will affect financial institutions using SWIFT. European Commission, March 2023, delivering a cross-border payments pilot for the European Commission's EU digital identif or identity wallet. My apologies. Um, I did not recognize that symbol. Uh, this is Q1 2023, launching an instant payment platform to facilitate financial transactions in the UAE. My apologies, I should have recognized the flag. <laughs> Japan Gov. Uh, this is April 2023, allowing companies to pay salaries digitally through money transfer providers, not crypto, just to elaborate. Um, next one is the United States, it looks like. Uh, Federal Reserve, uh, rolling out the FedNow service, which will enable real-time payments in the United States. Ooh, that's one I care about. I'm in the United States. Anyways, continuing. Uh, European Central Bank, Autumn 2023, finalizing the design of a digital euro. Bank of Indonesia, 2023 TBC, connecting cross-border payments system with five other Asian countries. It's a global thing, people. This is a global thing. This is not just one nation. This is not just the United States, not just Singapore, not just, you know, <laughs> it, it's a global thing, okay? And hopefully that's evident at this point. If not, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, let's see here. The Clearinghouse, EBA Clearing. Uh, this is 2023 TBC, launching a real-time cross-border payment link between the U.S. and Europe. Also, those economies are pretty much tied into one another, just something else to keep in mind. Uh, next thing, shout out to Michael Branch. Boom shakalaka. That's what it says. <laughs> Ripple's ODL represents 90% of the $6 trillion FX market daily. Ripple's top executive. Very interesting article. Like I said, it's posted on my page if you want to look through it. It's not very long of an article, so you know it's very easy to read it as well. Next thing, shout out to Blood of Crypto. The U.S. government finally cracking down on crypto fraud only means one thing. Crypto regulations are finally on the horizon. Clarity will prove who the real winners of crypto are. FTX was the regulation catalyst. Regulations are going to be key in regards to this new world we are going into. They keep kicking the can down the road, and eventually the road is going to run out, okay? Nobody knows when it's going to happen, you know, whether there's going to be a black swan event involved in it. Who knows, okay? But it is coming. Apparently, it's in the works, supposedly, you know. Like I said, we elect these officials. They're taking 10 years. You know, we put these people in office, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, next thing, I'm actually talking about that article, so disregard that. Um, this is from a, uh, what was it, a Korean bank, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's posted on my page. Uh, Nurturing blockchain in Korea. I'm just going to read an excerpt from it. In terms of the lines of business that were being pursued by these institutions, there was a noticeable concentration towards payments. Ooh. 80%. And to a lesser extent, capital markets, which was 20%. In most cases, only one line of business is being pursued in a pilot project, while in all cases, respondents indicated they would consider using digital assets for payments. Whew! That should be throwing some red flags off right now. The article continues. When further probed as to which particular digital asset would be adopted, 20% indicated XRP, while the rest indicated unspecified digital assets other than Ether and Bitcoin. The feature of digital assets that was identified as being most beneficial is reliability and rated second was competitive foreign exchange rates. Finally, on the subject of the preferred type of digital asset, CBDCs were the most popular, 90%, followed by non-bank stablecoins, 
just an interesting article. You know, we've already talked about, you know, what coins will be deemed stable coins, at least according to the World Bank and other institutions as well. These are just my thoughts, along with their thoughts, apparently, too. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Just wanted to give you guys that article. You can look it up, go through it. It's a little bit longer, if I remember correctly. So just as a heads up. Next thing, uh, this is another article. Uh, talks about emerging regulatory, law enforcement, and consumer protection challenges in regards to these digital currencies that are coming. Um, I'm just going to read an excerpt. One of the most prominent examples is XRP, which is used with a decentralized payment system called Ripple. Ripple allows users to make peer-to-peer -peer transfers in any, any, any currency. A key function of XRP is to facilitate the conversion from one currency to another. Quote, unquote, bridge currency. The article continues. For example, if a direct conversion between Mexican pesos and Thai baht is not available, the pesos can be exchanged for XRP and then the XRP for baht. As of March 31st, 2014, the total value of XRP was 878 million. We don't really care about that aspect, but just a general caveat in regards to how XRP works. Uh, this is probably redundant at this point because you've probably seen this in plenty of articles. I know I have myself. Just wanted to bring that to you guys. Uh, next thing, shout out to PMA, hash, uh, hashtag 74.5K underscore JD. Um, so this basically talks about the patent that David Schwartz has. This is what's key, I think, in this new world that we're going into. Um, and this was well before 2012. Um, so there's a picture of it. You can look at it. There's a link posting it as well. Um, basically, this patent from 1988 has been in the pipeline for a very long time. Um, and David also worked for a, I'm not going to mention a three-letter agency, so that way I get banned and was a developer for Bitcoin. XRP was always the one people just don't realize for how long this plan has been in place. And I sincerely agree with your sentiment. Just something posted on my page. Take a look whenever you get the opportunity. Um, this is from Infosys.com. Um, I think this was Bank of Japan, if I'm not mistaken. I see Bank of Japan as an example. But uh, I'm just going to read this excerpt. Like I said, the full article is on my page. Um, Ripple Labs, a San Francisco-based venture-backed startup, is currently doing research in exactly this field. The self-developed Ripple Transaction Protocol, RTXP, can serve as a central script which aims at allowing members of such a network to conduct cross currency transactions through RTXP every member can take advantage of the lowest prevailing exchange rates as an open market principle creates a competitive setup for liquidity Ooh, that's a big word that we are struggling with liquidity right now I wonder what the solution will be we shall see back to the article my apologies <laughs> Providers and guarantees the lowest exchange rate fees for transactions. The cryptocurrency Ripple XRP constitutes an optional bridging currency between all tradable currencies and can be used by each member of the network. Bridge currency. They are positioning themselves. I think they're doing pretty great. Just my opinion. Like I said, I'm just a cheerleader on the side, however you want to look at it. But yeah, just something to keep in mind. Um, next thing, oh, I've already talked about that. Uh, this is an article uh, from the Mon or, I'm sorry, Monetary Authority of Singapore. Uh, it's Project Ubin. It gives like a brief breakdown. If you want to read through the article, it's posted on my page. But Project Ubin, Central Bank Digital Money Using Distributed Ledger Technology, what it is. Pretty much gives you a general gist on what the article is about. Take a couple minutes, look at it, you know, whenever you get a little bit of free time. Um, next thing, I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, this is an excerpt. What was this from? Give me one second if it'll load. It's not loading for me. I'm just going to read the excerpt. It's on my page. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It says, Introduction to Ripple at the top. Uh, Ripple Written Evidence, CDC 0034, Central Bank Digital Currencies Inquiry. Um, so there's just an excerpt I just want to take out of this. Um, here we go. Using blockchain technology, Ripple allows financial institutions to process payments instantly, reliably, cost-effectively, and within invisibility anywhere in the world. That is going to be very important in this new world we're going into. The article continues. RippleNet, our enterprise software solution, which is powered by a standardized application programming interface and built on the market-leading and open standard interledger protocol, enables financial institutions to facilitate faster and less costly cross-border payments. Demonstrating that deep interoperability, this is going to be key in this new world we're going into, it's not just going to be one winner, just as a heads up, between commercial financial institutions can make payments truly efficient, particularly in eliminating the uncertainty and risk historically involved in moving money across borders using interbank messaging alone. SWIFT is a problem. 6% of the time, you lose your money. This is more efficient, a lot quicker, and a lot cheaper. Just as a thought. Next thing. 
Um, I'm just going to read this, not taking this out of context. In addition, Ripple offers these entities an on-demand liquidity capability which leverages... This is for the folks that say XRP is never documented anywhere. XRP, <laughs> the digital asset native to the XRP ledger, a distributed ledger platform, as a bridge between fiat currencies, further reducing the friction and cost for commercial financial institutions to transact across multiple global markets. Although Ripple utilizes XRP and the XRP ledger in its product offerings, XRP is independent, independent, of Ripple. So for people claiming, oh yeah, you know, XRP and Ripple, that's their token, they own the majority of it, etc., etc. If Ripple goes away tomorrow, XRP will still be out in the open market. Just as a caveat, just as a heads up. Believe it or not, it's still true in the words of Brad Kimes. The article continues. Um, the XRP ledger is decentralized. Also very important because some people say it's centralized open source and based on cryptography. Ripple leverages XRP for use in its product suite because of XRP's suitability for cross-border payments. Key characteristics, this is gonna be a surprise y'all, not really, include speed, scalability, energy efficiency, <coughs> like Bitcoin, and cost. Go figure. Full articles on my page if you wanna take a look at it, take a couple minutes. Next thing, uh, this is from European Central Bank. Uh, let me see here. It's joint research between the European, European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan in regards to synchronized cross-border payments. You already see where this is going. Ooh la la. Um, I'm not going to go too far into this. Uh, I'll just read a couple sentences from the beginning. It's basically the introduction. Um, it is posted on my page, um, so just as a heads up. The emergency of distributed ledger technology, or DLT, in recent years has spurred discussions around the future of financial market infrastructure, supporting payments and security settlement. Project Stella is a joint research undertaking by the ECB, European Central Bank, and the Bank of Japan. Launched in December 2016, which aims to contribute to the ongoing debate with experimental work and conceptual studies exploring DLT's opportunities and challenges for FMI. I'm not going to go too far into this. You have a general gist on what's going on in regards to that. DLT is the future. It is coming. Whether you are you know, excited for it or not, it is still coming. Okay? Believe it or not, it's still true. Shout out to Brad Combs again. <laughs> Anyways, next thing. Uh, shout out to the uh, U.S. Department of the Treasury. It talks about some questions on virtual currencies on their website. Um, you can go to home.treasury.gov. It's literally available at your fingertips. You can go look at it yourself. So it addresses certain digital currencies. Um, di the question was, what is the structure of a digital currency address on OFAC's SDN list? Digital currency addresses listed on the SDN list include their unique alphanumeric identifier and identify the digital currency to which the address corresponds. Example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Neo, Dash, Ripple, which they have XRP, IOTA, Monero, and Petro. Each digital currency address listed on the SDN list will have its own field. I'm not going to go through all of this jargon. I'm, I'm not. But, you know, I just found it interesting. It was posted on there. Uh, you can take a look at that yourself. Um, next thing, an article from City Street Strategies. Uh, this basically talks about XRP being a dominant global uh, digital bridge currency. There's a lot of diagrams and stuff involved in this as well. Um, so if you like pictures, this one's for you. Um, I'm not going to read all that. That's too much. I'm just taking an excerpt from page 7. All right. And here we go. Unlike other cryptocurrencies, Ripple has the most interest slash adoption from central banks and other large financial entities. Mic drop. This is where I hit the gong right here. Main reason, on-demand liquidity for cross-border transfers and payments combined with the development of personal CBDCs as central bank digital currencies for those that don't know. Um, and then there's a diagram, talks about new forms of cross-border and cross-currency settlement. Uh, and it says settlement assets as proxy for CBDC. Uh, digital token is denominated in major sovereign currencies to improve wholesale settlement in major currencies, fully backed by funds held at the central banks of issue. Then it also shows use of crypto assets as a bridge currency. Ripple liquidity, alternatives based on DLT, CLS net. So like I said, it's very, uh, very easy to read. Um, it's not too long of a document. It's 18 pages. So if you want to just look at the pictures, that's fine too. But they pretty much give a general synopsis of what the, the article is about. Next thing, this is from the UK FinTech State of the Nation. Um, 
I'm just gonna take an excerpt. I'm not gonna read all this verbatim. That's a lot. Talks about Santander, different fintechs, etc. Um, it is in the interest of our customers and the sector as a whole for banks and fintech startups to collaborate more closely. We are working with partner fintechs, smoothing their entry to market and providing access to a large data pool for testing and product refinement, whilst improving our own. Oh, I'm sorry, our own core capability and customer-centric solutions. For example. Last year's launch of OnePay FX by Santander and Ripple Labs, there's Ripple again, the company, which look at that, transform ease of international payments for our customers through low cost, same day, cross border transfers, and peer to peer payments. Kudos to Ripple. Next thing, shout out to XRP, Crypto Wolf, Polygon, Matic, uh, partners with Ripple Partner, MasterCard, announces Web3 Incubator for those, uh, those Matic fans out there. Uh, next thing, shout out to Kurt for this. This is very important and, you know, it kind of gives you food for thought. For those that have doubts, only 4.5 million people out of 8 billion people in the world hold XRP. You round it up, it's probably about 7.8, but that's not the point. Article continues. That's 0.00056 or 0.056% of people that's in existence on the planet. Article, or not article continues, but Twitter post continues. My apologies. Moral of the story, stop your dang crying, understand you are chosen, accumulate if you can, and watch the magic happen. I sincerely agree with Mr. Kurt, just being honest. And this man is a goat in the space. Respect. Next thing. Uh, Daily Hoddle, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says he's optimistic on crypto regulation breakthrough, in parentheses, in 2023. I don't know if he's hitting at anything. Who knows? Obviously, he's feeling very uh, upbeat in regards to where he thinks this is going. I'm all with him. I think it's coming soon, sooner rather than later, in my opinion. But, you know, like I said, they can keep kicking the can down the road. A lot of people who are accumulating will continue to do so. Just as a thought. Next thing. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, well, I guess I will. Um, so soundspace.com, I've never heard of it. I just thought it was interesting. I came across it on Twitter and somebody tagged me in it. Our staking on Zoom wallet will begin once our ICO ends. Staking will be on a one-to-one -one ratio. More details to be announced soon regarding the date and time. I don't know anything about this project. I'm just letting you know. I'm just throwing it out there just as a heads up. So not condoning it, not saying jump in. I'm just letting you guys know. Cool. Next thing. I'm going to skip that. Uh, shout out to Florence Nightingale. In order for ISO 20022 assets to start moving in value, precious metals should undergo revaluation. XRP, XLM, XCC are white hat military blockchains. Find it interesting. I'm just sharing the article. Obviously, everybody's entitled to their own, own opinion and their own sentiment in regards to this. I'm just bringing it to the table and thought it was an interesting tweet. Next thing. Uh, shout out to brightmo underscore cat 310. Look what I found on Etsy. Apparently, there's some shirts <laughs> that say resign, Gensler. Nobody wants you. I might have to order one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Anyways, um, next thing. I'm skipping that. Do, do, do. Skip that. Here we go. XRP Crypto Wolf. XRP lawyer John Deaton said whatever the outcome of the Ripple SEC lawsuit is, it might likely be the only clarity the crypto market gets for the next two years. I don't know. My, my ears are to the streets right now, and that, that's kind of interesting that he said that, you know, and what if Ripple is the only company that has, you know, clarity? Because essentially, we're all here because, you know, obviously we have ETHgate and everything going on, but people supposedly think that Bitcoin and Ethereum already have clarity. You know, I've heard Bitcoin is a commodity, then I've heard, oh, it's not a commodity, oh, there's no regulation, oh, there is regulation. They, are, they have been teeter-tottering back and forth in regards to this thought. But what if? This is just a possibility. Like I said, you know, you can take it how you want. You can take it and run with it. You can just drop it right here. That's fine. What if Ripple is the only company that does have clarity once this lawsuit does come to a conclusion? Imagine that. Hey, XRP now has clarity. Hey, now these institutions, if they wanted to jump on board and utilize the tech, they could. There's no repercussions because we have clarity. And then that, what is it, trillion dollar market cap right now just flies. Just a thought. Like I said, you know, you can take it how you want. I like to give scenarios. All right, next thing. Um, do I want to talk about this? Yeah, I can. Impel brings Fluence Federated U.S. stablecoin to XDC network. Of course I want to talk about this. Uh, it pretty much tells you a little bit about it, but, you know, it's basically for more than just cross-border payments. Um, let me see here. They have a strategic partnership that will deliver a variety of innovative software solutions to the XDC network's ecosystem by allowing tr traditional banks and financial institutions to, you'll find out next, just 
grab the article. <laughs> um, let me see here. I'm going to skip that. Got to skip that. Um, Argentina and China are to formalize a currency swap deal, according to XRP Crypto Quebec 78K. That's very interesting. I mean, BRICS nations <laughs> are increasing by the day, so just something to keep in mind. Um, and a lot of people aren't looking out for that. But like I said, this is just my thought. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to skip that for now. I'll save that later. Uh, Flare, um, anybody that is getting Flare for free, um, it does come, I think it's 7 p.m. Eastern time, if I'm not mistaken. It should show up in your wallet. So, you know, if you are buying, selling, hodling, you know, keep doing what you do. But, you know, like I said, just as a reminder, you should be getting that today. Uh, next thing, shout out to Crypto Vinco. New analysis shows Binance is bleeding assets at a dangerous rate with over $12 billion vanishing in less than six, whew, 60 days. Lord. Much worse than CEO CZ indicated last month. I'm not going to comment on the Binance situation. At the end of the day, I custody my own crypto. <laughs> my own digital assets is the term I prefer. But like I said, you do what you want. That's your money. Like I said, I've seen way too many things happen in this space over the past couple of years. Nope, not doing it. So just wanted to bring that to y'all. Um, and then shout out to XRP underscore CRO. We truly believe that there is an internet of value coming. Pat Thielen, VP of Global Account Management at Ripple. We've already talked about the internet of value. You know, it should be as easy and simple as sending an email. You should be able to send money basically at the same speed. Ripple's already mentioned this as well. Um, I'm going to try not to make this video too long, so I'm just going to touch on one more thing. It's an article that I came across. Um, I'll address the question in the next video. IRS official, crypto is here to stay and becoming more and more legitimate. I could have told you that. <laughs> you, can't get a word, you can't get around it. Once the genie's out the bottle, it is out. Um, so it's a very short article. Basically, uh, the IRS, uh, what was the gentleman's name? Thomas Fataruso. Uh, he's a special agent in charge of the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation New York office. Dang, that's a long title. Um, talked about crypto in an interview with Wall Street Journal not too long ago. Um, so he basically believes crypto, this is a quote, I won't say basically, crypto is, cryptocurrency is here to stay. As far as I'm concerned, it isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and it's becoming more legitimate. As the years roll on, it becomes more sophisticated. Um, so it basically just uh, details his thoughts in regards to that. Um, then it talks about how they want to uh, partner with different crypto firms. Um, let me see here. Here we go. That's something we're always willing or always working toward. That's always the end goal, to have those partnerships and to have a relationship that isn't contentious, more of a symbiotic relationship. Um, and what else? Do, 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 do. That's really pretty much it in regards to that. Um, I'm not going to make this video too long. I'm not going to talk about the last question. But, you know, like I said, hey, you have another day. You know, I want you to fast forward five years from now and, you know, think about where the crypto market is at right now um, versus where it is in the five years. And, you know, I want you to really take a look back like, hey, did I do everything I could in regards to this? Did I research this? Did I look into this? You know, did I actually take my hard earned time to research this this project, whatever project it is, you know, whether it's XRP, if it's not XRP, XLM, XCC, VET, it, it doesn't matter, whatever. Think about it. Five years from now, I think your future self will be thanking you for taking the time to look into this asset space. You know, it is a literally a brand new asset class okay and we have the opportunity to get in basically at the bottom level i mean depending on price however you want to look at it if you want to look at it that way but you know i think the market cap is going to increase substantially over the next couple of years uh obviously you know we are the innovators we are the people in here you know there's people that trade there's people that you know hodl that's what i do i hodl but you know at the end of the day i think five to ten years from now we will be thanking ourselves for actually taking the time you know taking that extra step not just listening to the news and the media like oh crypto's a scam oh you know all crypto's a scam because ftx went down you know like pat yourselves on the back for actually taking the necessary time to look into these things rather than relying on what somebody else is telling you okay that's a kudos to anyone and everyone. And, and I'm not just talking about XRP or XLM or XCC. Those people that actually research. You know, I think utility, in my opinion, like I said, will be the driver in the very near future. Um, you know, right now it's speculation, essentially. You know, there's some businesses that use Bitcoin, cool. But, you know, obviously, as we've seen in, I think it was Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. Um, was it Brazil? Where they use Bitcoin and, like, people were going to the grocery store and having issues with, like, getting their money. You know, Bitcoin is great. Okay, I'm not even gonna lie. It was a very innovative technology. You know, it was a breakthrough. You know, it's different from the traditional form of finance, and it definitely paved the way for some of these up and coming projects. In my opinion, like I said, um, 
just pat yourselves on the back. Just be proud of yourself, you know. And don't focus on it. There's a lot of negative sentiment right now in the space. You know, there's people saying, hey, you need to get your money out of crypto. Or, hey, crypto's going to zero. Or, hey, you know, crypto's just a fad. Or, hey, crypto is a scam, you know. Like, and these are the same people that will be knocking on your door, calling your phone five years from now, asking, hey, why didn't you tell me? Or, hey, why didn't you encourage me to get in? Congratulations, that's all I'm going to say. Anyways, that's all I got for y'all. Sorry I went on a little rant. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share this with something you love. I right, so go down. Catch y'all in another video. Thanks so much.